problem, they are telling us that there is constant angular acceleration. Anytime you hear constant angular acceleration or constant acceleration, automatically know that this is yielding the kinematic equations. So there's four kinematic equations in part A in this problem. We will be using this one right here. So it's final angular velocity, excuse me, is equal to initial angular velocity plus acceleration times time. They also give us the value of that acceleration to be 1.5 radians per second squared. So write that down. Next, how much time does it take to reach an angular velocity? So they're saying after a certain amount of time has elapsed, I'm giving you a final value of 36. So our final angular velocity is equal to 36. They give that to us. Radians per second. Starting from rest. So that means our initial is going to be zero because we're not moving. So initial angular velocity is zero. Next, lastly, it's asking how much time does it take? So T is our unknown variable. I always just like to write a question mark. That's just what I do. Okay, so we have three variables and one unknown variable. So we can solve for that using this equation right here. So plug in the numbers. So final angular velocity is 36, which is equal to zero plus acceleration, which is 1.5 times time. It's like zero isn't there. So just divide both sides, solve for T, divide by 1.5. We get T is equal to 36 divided by 1.5. If you put this in the calculator, you should get 24 seconds. I'm going to go ahead and erase this board and I'll be back with part B. All right, guys, now that the board is erased, let's get back to part B. So the question says, through how many revolutions does the blade turn in this time interval? So in the last problem, part A, we solve for that time interval to be 24 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down, make sure I label everything. And we also know that our acceleration is constant. So it's still 1.5 radians per second squared in part B, it never changed, okay? We want revolutions. There's a blade turning. I'm gonna go ahead and draw an illustration so we have a blade. Here's my blender blades. You know, you put that protein in there, bananas, get a good smoothie after a good workout. All right, anyway, back to math, okay. So this is our blender. They don't give us an initial angle. So I'm going to assume the positive x-axis. This is my initial angle, I'm assuming this. Zero radians. We're at zero degrees or zero radians. Sorry about that. All right, so we're assuming we're starting here. We're gonna spin in a counterclockwise in the positive direction. We need to solve for our final angle. Let's say our angle's right here. We can subtract that by our initial and solve how many revolutions that was. So to solve, for our final angle, we use the kinematic equation. Our final angle is equal to our initial angle plus our initial velocity times time plus one half times acceleration times time squared. Now we start at rest because we're not moving before the blender is turned on. So our initial velocity is zero. Our initial angle is also zero. So these terms are gonna go away and it's just gonna be these two. So solve for 
theta final, we have one half acceleration, 1.5 times time squared, 24 squared. Now you should receive a value of 432 radians. 432 radians. This is how much we rotated. Started at zero radians, 432 radians. So now we need to solve for how many revolutions that was. We can set up a conversion factor. We know that one revolution in trigonometry on the unit circle is equal to two pi radians. So one revolution is to two pi radians, just as x revolutions is to 432 radians. I set up a conversion factor so I can see how many revolutions according to this amount of radians. So you solve for x, so x, just do some cross multiply, x is equal to 432 divided by 2 pi, and that outputs a value of 68.8 revolutions. That's it for this video, guys. Thank you for joining. Stay safe with all this corona stuff going on, and take care.